The last time North Korea's Kim Jong-un met Russian leader Vladimir Putin in 2019, he took his armored train to Vladivostok, the closest major Russian city to Pyongyang. At that time, Kim was seeking support in nuclear negotiations with former U.S. President Donald Trump. On Monday, the New York Times reported that he would travel to Russia this month to meet Putin again, under very different circumstances. The paper reported Kim will discuss the possibility of supplying Moscow with weapons to support its war in Ukraine, citing U.S. and allied sources, who also said Kim will travel from Pyongyang again by train, like his father Kim Jong-il, who famously shunned air travel, and they'd meet again in Vladivostok. The Times reported that this time Putin's likely to ask Kim to send Russia artillery shells and anti-tank missiles in exchange for Moscow's technology to improve Pyongyang's satellites and nuclear-powered submarines. Reports of Kim's visit come as the United States last week raised concerns that arms negotiations between Russia and North Korea are advancing actively, and that Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu had tried on a visit to North Korea in July to convince Pyongyang to sell artillery ammunition to Russia. Last week, White House National Security spokesman John Kirby said that North Korea delivered infantry rockets and missiles into Russia last year, and that Moscow has been seeking to acquire additional munitions since then. Pyongyang and Moscow have both previously denied that the North is supplying Russia with arms for use in its war in Ukraine. Last week, though, the Kremlin said that Moscow plans on deepening its mutually respectful relations with Pyongyang, one of its close Cold War allies and also one of a small handful of countries to back Russia's proclaimed annexation of parts of Ukraine last year. I think we can all agree that freedom of expression is not limitless. Your words have consequences. Your actions have fallouts. So the line must be drawn somewhere. The only question is where. So there are upgrades across the board. All three defense services are getting bigger and more lethal weapons. And this is the need of the hour. China's buildup on the border remains a concern, 38 months and counting. India needs better weapons to secure its front lines. So arms trade is just another source of income for them. And this is a serious setback in the fight against terrorism, all because of American callousness. So the stock rally is like a vote of confidence from investors. They are betting on India. They're positive about the India story. It's the government's job now to repay that faith. This incident once again highlights the role of social media and the internet. It's a double-edged sword, really. So tough times for the world. There is inflation, layoffs and pay cuts. But not for King Charles of Britain. Forget pay cuts. He's all set to receive a massive pay hike. What is offensive to one religion could be sacred to another. Europe must realize this. They keep lecturing the world about minorities, how they should be protected, how their rights and culture must be promoted. But at home, it's the exact opposite. People are burning the holy book of your minority group. And what is your response? You say it's freedom of expression. 